So today we're talking about a manipulation mode that is called axes locking. And you've seen me use this with the scale tool. For example, I did this, I scaled this out, but I said it was too big. So I snapped it to the Y axes in this particular case. You can do this with many of the, the various features. So I'm gonna use the grab tool to move this around and show you how else you can use it. So here I'm moving it freely wherever, all over the, the 3D viewport. And I hit X and now I'm stuck along the X axis. I hit Y or I hit Z and then I can move along whichever one I want. So that works great. Now, another thing you can do, which uh, could, you know, might depend upon the, the, the physical setup you have, your computer. I don't find it handy with a regular typical PC, but you can do this. I can hit G grab it, move it around, and now what I do is I can right click near, you see how my, my cursor is closest to the Y axis? If I right click, it's now stuck in it, and I get it over here close to the X axis. Now it's, oops, it dropped away, and now it's stuck on the X axis. Now it's gonna drop away, and then now it's stuck on the Z axis. So that's another way to do that. We'll drop it. One more way, it's also middle click, but a little bit different, so I hit grab again to move it around, and now instead of just clicking and letting go, I'm gonna hold down middle mouse and you see the little white line moving around there? It snaps as it gets close to the different axes. So that's an option. So that in itself is all pretty understandable, but what happens if I have something like this? Something that's got faces that are not necessarily on the axes. So if I hit G to go ahead and move this, of course it moves freely, and now I hit Z and it goes up and down on the Z axis or the Y or the X, right? So let's go back to the Z. Now watch, I'm gonna hit Z twice. Well, actually, I'm, I'm hitting it a second time. I don't have to double tap it like GG. I just have to hit it a second time. And now look what's happening. Now it's moving along what they're calling the local axis. So the local axis is local X, Y, and Z coordinates to this cube. And honestly, I don't know which way I rotated it, but this is what it's considering to be the Z. And if I hit Y, now it goes to the Y, but if I hit Y again, now it's on the local Y axis and then X back to X, but hit it again. And now it's on the local X axis. Okay, now we've set it back and then we'll go into edit mode and see what we can do here. So I can pick this face and I could grab that and move it all around, but I can also snap that to the Z, snap it to the X, to the Y, whatever you like there. But what happens if, for example, I pick a point? So I can pick a point right there and the same thing is going to be in effect. I can hit the G key. I can move around freely. I hit the Z and it'll move up and down, the Y, the X. The same thing will happen with a line. But again, what'll happen here if I rotate it? So by the way, this is the R key. And since we're talking about axes locking, right now I'm freely rotating it, but again, I can hit the X axis and now I can rotate around that, around the Y, around the Z. So we'll go ahead and rotate it a little bit around the Y. And then while we're there, I'll hit R again, and now I'll rotate it a little bit around the Z, just to show you that you can. And to get this line right here entirely off any axes that you would see. Then as you can probably imagine, if I grab this and wiggle it around, I can do all the same stuff with it as before. But let's say now I wanna lock this line to what would seem to be the local axes. With it all turned like this, even with it turned like this, with the line selection here, Watch, I'm gonna hit G to grab it. And what I would like you to do is look up here in the top left corner. We're going to be doing something else with that in just a moment. So I grab this and I wiggle it around and then I'll say, um, how about Z? So now we're moving up and down in Z. Look in the top left, it says I'm trying to move it so much, I am moving it so much along global Z. So now I hit Z again and it seems to be doing the same thing but it does say local Z, and then I hit it the third time and it lets it go back to kind of free form. So that's not gonna work for me. Up here, that I have some more options. So global and local right here is what I was switching back and forth between, 
I've got normal gimbal view and cursor, and I'm not gonna go through every single one of these right now, but I did wanna show you normal because I think it's really useful with this type of thing right here, and a little bit of an insight into this area. Also, if you hit comma right here, comma, um, all those things right there are in a nice little uh, weapons wheel right here. So I'm gonna pick number two, hit that line, and I'm gonna change this over to normal. Now I hit grab and it's gonna move it freely, but now I hit X or Y, there we found it. There's the local or the normal Y axes of that line right there. Now I can move it right along. And I think that is really helpful in a lot of different circumstances. So what if I want to move this thing around and let's say I want it to snap it to the Y and then you think, well, no, I mean, I want it on the X, but the X and the, the Y, I want it on the X and the Y. So really what you're saying is I don't want it on the Z. And technically this is going to lock it to the XY plane. And so if this is a new concept for you, we've got X going through right here, we've got Y going through like this. If I laid a piece of paper on top of this, I would have a plane and it would be on X and Y. So that's the XY plane. Up here, this is Z and this is Y. So it, it, you can say it's the ZY, most CAD programs call it the YZ, but whatever. And then the ZX plane. So if you're ever around in those areas and you're wondering why they're named that, that's why. So what I wanna do is I wanna move this cube on the X, Y plane, or I want to not move it on the Z key. So that's probably the better way to think about it. So if I hit Z, it's on Z, but if I hold down, sh or hit Shift Z, now it's on everything, the two other ones, except for Z. So it might look like it's freely moving, but if I move it anywhere out here and then I tip it up, it's, remember it was halfway up and halfway down, so it's still exactly uh, on the Z up and down where it was, but I've moved it on the X, Y plane. And then the last one for now is moving things by a value. And this can really be something that's important to you uh, when you're trying to figure out how to move something just a certain amount. So uh, first you need to understand that the default unit in Blender is the metric system. So it's metric and it's in meters. So if there is a unit, if you see that it's saying it's moving one, two, three, or four, it's moving one, two, three, or four meters. Right now, this cube is very large. Uh, it might not look like it, but if you're looking down at this, this is one square, two square, three, right? So it's two by two by two meters. So this is, this is taller than a person. So somewhere down the road, you might want to keep that in mind when you actually go to build something that's supposed to be, you know, kind of relatively to scale and it'll help with the what lighting and, and shadows to some degree. So I decide that I want to move this up on top of the X, Y plane right here. And that's really pretty common because one of the things that you'll end up doing is uh, you'll add in another feature. And so I'll add in a plane and you see it goes right at origin right there. And then I'll scale this sucker out really big and uh, you'll make yourself a floor. By the way, did you notice how I just kept scrolling right through my screen? Try that sometime, that's a cool blender trick. So there is my floor and I want this on top of the floor. Well, it's two by two, so I need to get it right smack on the floor. I need to bring this up one meter. So how am I gonna do that? So I click this here and now I am gonna grab it, wiggle it all over the place, right? But I'm gonna hit Z, okay? And I'm on the Z axis. Now look over here in the corner again, look at those numbers. So grab Z up, see the numbers moving? I'm gonna let go of the mouse. I don't do anything. I don't reach over there and try to click over there. Look where it says, uh, well, the value says two. I just write one. You see how it just changed to one? And then I hit enter. Now this, is sitting right smack on top of that plane that I made. Let's do that again. Let's get rid of the plane. Here, let's just undo all of that. Here's our cube. Pick it, grab, Z, one, enter. You see, piece of cake. So do this again, uh, G, X, three, enter. Now just moved it over on the X axis, three meters. 
So that's it for right now with the axes lock and, and, and a few other ways about manipulation here. This is gonna be really helpful as we move forward into some of the other things we're going to start making fairly soon.